let's get into some hot stove, warm stove arbitration and some signings and some things like that before we get into, uh, we got a lot of stuff to talk about today, actually. So Jorge Soler signed with the Giants. It's His deal is three years, 42 million. We expect him to DH probably full time for the Giants. He might platoon a little bit, but he's probably going to DH almost all day, every day. So that'll be really cool. I'm a little disappointed in this. He's not going to look as good in a Giants uniform as he did in a Marlins uniform. 100%. I totally agree with that. That's but the only reason I'm really disappointed in this. It's a good spot for him, though. It's a great he'll, he'll be successful doesn't. there. He will be, and it'll be great for the Giants and Giants fans. Yep. Okay, Liam Hendricks signed with the Red Sox. Two years, $10 million. There's a mutual option for a third year. Brand, this one was killing me. Brandon Woodruff and the Brewers agreed to a two-year deal because the money was not disclosed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sneaky! I was like, very, very sneaky. <laughs> it was very nice. Uh, he is expected to miss. Okay, he's still expected to miss most of this season after shoulder surgery last October. So the, he could the still miss all thing, of it too. They don't know. Right. This whole they thing is really shrouded are. in mystery, and who knows what's going to happen? Who knows what's going on? I mean, I expect Brandon Woodruff knows, and I hope the Brewers know what they're doing, but I'm sure they do. We, but I told this is more what I've been saying about the Brewers, where it's like, what? They're just playing different this year. I don't know why, but all the decisions they're making seem wonky. And then after further review, it's like, well, okay, maybe that might work out. So I don't, it's I don't just know. Another, it's just another question mark in Milwaukee. <laughs> it totally is. A re, a Luis Arise loses his arbitration hearing. He gets his ten point six million instead of his twelve million that he asked for. This that is the dumbest thing. It's a terrible ever. mistake. Why because if, would if you I'm do him, that? like, like this is the thing is like I understand it's a business, right? This is the business side of it. I get it. Yes, but yes. On the other side, though, like as a player, you want a measure of loyalty, and me, I'm like, um. Don't offer me an extension because I probably am not going to sign it uh, because I'm going to go see if I can find somebody else who appreciates me more than you do. 7,000%. This was such a bad faith move for me. Yep. I hate this for him, but I'm going to love it. $4 million. Get real. Come on, man. That's like a dollar 50. Okay. (laughs) Uh, apparently, and this we're going to just gloss over, but apparently the Yankees have another offer on the table for Blake Snell. There's literally no detail out there yet. If there was, we'd bring it to you. And with our luck, there probably will be by the time this comes I, out. I did see something in the ballpark of like $35 million a year, but I don't know for sure if that's exactly what it is. I think that exactly. might be speculation. I don't know for sure, though. Exactly. So the previous $150 million offer was rejected. We learned it was the only offer made to Blake Snell by any team around the league. Uh, he snubbed it, and now the Yankees have come back after they signed Marcus Stroman as kind of a backup sort of option. So I'm kind of yeah. interested to see what will happen uh, and with a higher AAV and average annual value. Um, maybe that'll do it, because I don't think they're going to give him more than five or six years. So. Yeah, it's crazy.